that's gonna be hard because this is M stack core and this is M stack M. St st I'm already struggling. <laughs> Hey guys, I am super excited because I decided to make a video about this instead of making a video about Alexa. Alexa is gonna come later. This is M5 Stick C+, and yes, I'm reading this because otherwise I'm gonna get confused. Yes, it is coming from M5 Stack, guys. So this is M5 Stack, M5 Stick C+, I nearly got it there. And this is the most feature-packed ESP uh, device per square millimeter. <laughs> And why am I saying this? Well, just look at this. This is smaller than a thumb and I'm gonna go through a list of things that this support and this is insane. When it comes to ESP32, this is probably the closest you're gonna get and the difference is, well, spectacular. And to keep up with traditional technical review, let's go through the specifications. So you have that ESP32 chipset, which is a Pico version with 240 megahertz dual-core processor, 520 RAM and 4 megabytes of flash. Slightly less than on the core version, but hey, come on, this is tiny, okay? Let's 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 have some forgiveness. Now, on top of that, we have a nice 1.1 inch display, which is a TFT 135 by 240. Not too bad, actually. And that there is obviously USB type C for connectivity. Great 2020. I love you forever. And a groove type connector with I2C connectivity, or you can just assign to URT if you want to. That list isn't over. There is a real time clock, and since there is a real time clock, it means that there is also a battery to support this. So you have a battery of 120 milliamps to keep this device powered for a couple of hours, and six axis gyroscope, and there is a LED, infrared LED, two custom buttons, microphone, buzzer, and on top of that, eight pin GPIO header. And those are all the features before I even mention that this is modular, expandable. So if you take a look at M5 stack page, you'll discover that the cheapest module is probably a temperature or something just costing you a couple of dollars. But the range ends with eye watering in price of $400 for a hybrid between M5 stick and a thermal camera. This is a second device from M5 stack I covered. Previously I talked about a core, so if you want to know a little bit more about this, there is a video there for you. Now, the experience, the programming experience is very similar. You don't have to be versed in C or you don't have to master Arduino IDE to actually get something going. I've set myself a challenge to use only visual interface to program something interesting, and I'm gonna get to this in a second. Now, the programming is split into two different software pieces. First, you have an M5 burner, which you can use to load and update the firmware, and also try a couple of different custom firmwares from the community to kind of give you a rough idea what this device is capable of without even touching the code. Once you're feeling ready for some programming action, then load up either a web-based UI flow, or you can download the equivalent ID on your computer and start programming. And the biggest fan of it is just, you can start programming wirelessly because all code updates are being sent over the internet. And it's just fabulous just sitting there, not having any uh, wires connected to this thing and seeing this perform different tasks. If you're just getting started with coding, UI flow has you covered. This is a brand new device, so list of examples isn't exactly huge. There's only three examples in IDE. However, there is an associated PDF that gives you a couple of more details and a little bit more in-depth explanation how to get started. So I would strongly recommend you that you're gonna go through this as well. Now that you are ready for programming action, you can start off with visual programming with MicroPython. The scratch-alike approach is brilliant if you want to try it out and uh, without writing a single line of code. But once you kind of reach the level and the confidence required to switch to MicroPython, you can start programming by writing the code. The choice is up to you. And obviously, if you feel advanced enough, you can just straight down jump to Arduino ID and use ESP specific libraries because after all, this is just an ESP device. 
So I have set myself a challenge to create something silly, ridiculous, but yet impressive just using the visual interface. I wasn't sure whether I'm going to meet my goal, but I've decided to make something I call a print stick. Uh, it's a small device that you can simply put in your pocket and it will display the basic function of your 3D printer. For this, I'm using MQTT to communicate with Octoprint linked to my Ender 3. And the 3 is a great printer, by the way, so if you want to take a look at my review, it's there for you. All that data coming from MQTT is being processed by ESP32 on this little fella and displayed on that tiny little screen, which is awesome. And on that little screen, I've got access to a couple of different information. So I can see what the printer is doing, what are the temperature for the hot end and the bed. They also change color based on the nominal settings. Uh, there is access to how long the print has been going on using real time clock, which means it also resumes uh, when I power cycle the device. And lastly, there is a progress bar that indicates the progress on the, of the printout. That's pretty awesome and, uh, well, you can just put it in your pocket and take it with you. And don't get scared if that looks complicated. I didn't have much previous UI flow experience and it took me about two hours to compose something like that. I'm sure it contains a couple of bugs that I would iron out uh, by looking at the code, but as a prototyping tool, it's just brilliant. You can clearly see I'm overly enthusiastic about this, so let's talk about disadvantages. Well, it kind of doesn't have any. I could complain that ESP32 doesn't have a 5 GHz Wi-Fi. I could complain that Bluetooth itself and the Wi-Fi are using the same antenna, which means you have to alternate them in uh, the way you write the code if you want to use both features at the same time. And I could complain about, I don't know, maybe the battery life, which isn't the great, but there are models to extend the battery as well. Frankly speaking, this only costs $14, so it's so much cheaper than a kit like that and offers almost as many functions as the fully-fledged Fire Development Kit. So, as a choice, honestly, this is really cool if you just want to get started. I would like to thank M5Stack for sending me this so I could take a look. I'm definitely in love with their products and this is not the last product I'll be talking about for sure. So if you are interested in this, obviously there are links to the product in the description of the video. Now, do me a favor, share this with anyone you want to introduce it to programming because this is probably the best way to get started. It's inexpensive, accessible and literally quite fun. You know this section, you know how it works. This is where I pitch my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and all uh, social media if you want to get notification whenever I post something. I do not have a posting schedule, so if you don't want to miss it out, it's the best way to uh, get the notification about this. You probably know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain this at all. So, with that said, I'm gonna say my goodbyes. Take care guys, bye!